It's February. Okay, we need data. Um, uh, let's see. How about how old are your parents? Fifty-two and fifty-four. Uh, my dad is seventy. Nope. He's seventy-five. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to put some more numbers on here. We're going to pretend like other people are in here. Like maybe somebody's got a pretty old parent, and then somebody's got a pretty young. How old are you guys? 18, so um, 40. Maybe somebody's like 39. That's disgusting because I'm 39. I could be your parents. Yuck. Um, and let's do a 36 and a – that's enough. Okay. So, uh, stem and leaf plot looks like this. I've got a line down the middle and a line going across, kind of like a cross, but one that has the cross part way too high. Um, the stem part of the data, which is the left side, is the leftmost digit of what you're writing. So on this one, it'll be the tens over here and the ones over here. We don't have to write the tens that aren't there, so we don't have to write 10, 20, 30. We do have, we've got 30s, we've got 40s, we've got 50s, 60s, and 70s, no 80s. Even if we had like no 50s, we'd still put it in there because whatever you start with to whatever you finish, you do all the spots in between because it's look, you're like visually looking at it. Okay, and then you line up the ones next to it. So like a 46 would look like this. And then here's a 52 and a 75, a 47, 54, 60, 40, 39, and 36. Now, if I had the same number twice, I would write that number again and again and again until it so, like, if it was 46, I'd keep putting sixes over here to represent everybody. Okay. This side is the side you're looking at visually to see where most of the data is. It looks like most of our data is in the 40s. And the final thing is you always have to have a key. Um, you can pick a number from your set or pick a number that's not from your set, and you write it like this. You say a number and then a line and then the other number that that's equal to 52. If you're thinking, well, that's a silly thing to have to write. We already wrote tens and ones on it. That's because uh, uh, stem and leaf plots don't usually have the words tens and ones on the top. I'm just writing it to show you what's there. Um, and also, if you had something like, like, let's suppose we were talking about grade point averages. I could have like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it would be like 2.8, 3.2. And so it could be ones on the left and like decimals on the right. Um, and, or hundreds or something like that. So it's not always tens and ones. Okay, pie chart. Should we do the silly thing we did last year? Justin? I don't know what it was. Um, uh, funny ways to pay, say pie chart? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a good one? I have no clue. How about P chart? That's a good one. P chart. You got a funny way to say pie chart? Um, wait, uh, pi charte. I seem to remember one of them, one of them, it was either Nathan or Noah, one of them just said a uh, circle graph. <laughs> I remember 
were you in the class with Triton? I don't remember. I remember Triton said uh, P.A. Uh, Shart. Feels like a Triton thing to say, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it up to you, Georgia. Let's say there were 10 people in this room. How many people do you think would vote for these different things? For what's the funniest? P-chart, pie charte, circle graph, and P-A chart. I'd say six for P-A chart. Yeah. Uh, three for pie charte. Mm-hmm. One for P chart. Nice. Okay. So when we make a circle, the book would suggest, which I think is insane and definitely not something that is required on the AP test, that you literally figure out, like you would say, since there are 10 options here, right, 10 people, um, and six out of 10 liked uh, P A chart, that they that we should take 60% uh, of 360 and multiply it in our calculator and then actually measure that out with a compass and write down that exact angle, which I suppose would be correct, but it's also a nightmare, and we're not going to do it because I don't want to. Um, halfway across would be, what, 5 out of 10? Mm -hmm. So just as long as it's somewhat realistic, like 6 out of 10, maybe like that. All right. Then what you do is you can either use colors or you can use symbols or sometimes you can just write in the pie chart what you want to say. Uh, I'm going to use symbols. I'm going to say that uh, PA chart is dots. Pie charte was three out of 10, we'll make those swirlies. And P chart can be stripes. Oh, something that we forgot to write, which everybody should, is funny ways to say pie chart. We always got to have a label. If something does not get any votes, it still goes on the key, but obviously doesn't go in the circle because there's no space for it. And then let's go back up to example one for the stem and leaf plot. And for that one, I want you to write a label on top that says uh, ages of our parents. And then in the key, it should say 52 years. Or at least mine said 52 years. Yours might be a different number. Okay. Example three. All right, Justin, a Pareto chart. Justin, let's say that you opened up a Skittles bag. What are the colors in a Skittles bag? Purple, red, green. What'd you say? <coughs> Orange? Orange. <coughs> Is that it? Yes. <coughs> okay. Justin, let's say that you're sharing with all your friends. All your many, many friends. Let's say that you've got 12 friends that you're sharing with. Big day. What are their favorite kinds of Skittles? If you had to, like... Accurately guess. If you ask 12 people, well, okay, let's just get this out of the way. What's your favorite kind? Purple. Okay. And Georgia? 
Georgia? <coughs> Purple's also my favorite. Okay. Three of your friends are already done. Nine more. Nine more data points. <laughs>